So with that, I'd like to invite a person who is a mentor to me, who helped teach me more than I can actually say, um, who is one of the most honorable men I've ever met in my entire life. I'd like to bring up the president of the Providence Central Labor Council, Paul McDonald, to talk about today's Labor Day. Thank you, Mike, for that great introduction. I certainly appreciate that. I've taken the liberty of writing a few things about Labor Day down, since at my age we begin to forget a little bit, so please forgive me for writing it all down and reading it to you, but it's so important. Good afternoon, brothers and sisters. Labor Day is our day. On behalf of the 29,000 men and women of the Providence Central Labor Council, I thank you for your support and for your attendance here today, and I offer their gratitude. We stand here today for what is right, women's rights, workers' rights, civil rights, voting rights, gay rights, immigrants' rights, and I applaud the governor for pledging to defend the dreamers. I hope there's an awakening for the president to understand what he is about to do. The damage that he will bring to our DACA is impossible to understand. I don't get it, he don't get it, but it's all wrong. If you're looking to the future, you have to look to the past. Labor Day is brought to you by the workers of years ago. The road labor has followed is decorated with countless accomplishments, triumphs, and yes, tragedy. Unions were public policy advocates long before it became fashionable. Many of the public policies people take for granted, such as the eight-hour workday, weekends, paid vacations, the prohibition of child labor, Social Security, sick leave, Family Medical Leave Act, minimum wage, overtime pay, equal pay for equal work, to name a few that was fought for by labor. Yeah. Yeah. I want you to know, those who do not belong to a union, we don't tip you upside down and ask you for a union card. We fight for you also. That's right. Labor has done more for the American people and received less credit for their efforts than any other organizations that I'm aware of. It is a fact we have played an important role in the passage of virtually every piece of social legislation that benefits the American family. Every person who was ever laid off from a job and has been able to collect an unemployment check should be grateful to the AFL-CIO, who not only fought to enact the law, but works hard to increase the benefits every day. Every person, after a lifetime of work, who is able to collect a Social Security check, ought to have a warm spot in their heart for the labor movement who fought for that Social Security benefit that we enjoy today. It was the young unions at the turn of the century that fought for free public education over the bitter opposition of the conservative forces. How many young workers in today's average family know anything of what it took for the men and women to endure and to win the eight-hour day and the five-day work week, which they now accept as their right? All of us are going to stay together. We're going to fight together. We're not going to yield to Washington. I know most of you as friends, brothers, and sisters who are dedicated to the labor movement and to despite the difficulties. I know we who are here today will stand together, fight together, and win together. Solidarity has more meaning today than ever before. Solidarity forever, brothers and sisters.